Thank you for downloading this podcast from the British Theatre Guide. For more information about British Theatre Guide, please visit britishtheatreguide.info. York Theatre Royal has a growing reputation for its recent large-scale productions involving huge numbers of community cast and crew on projects exploring local history and culture on large canvases across the city. From the epic biblical story of the mystery plays in the museum gardens to the rise and fall of railway pioneer George Hudson at the National Railway Museum, these plays have worked with thousands of enthusiastic local volunteers, both on and off stage, to bring theatre out into and amongst the community. I've come to the Methodist Hall in New York, a temporary rehearsal space, to have a chat about the latest of these productions, Everything is Possible, The York Suffragettes. The sixth such large-scale community project, it's a co-production with Pilot Theatre and it's being co-directed by Juliet Foster. Hello. And Katie Posner. Hello. uh, Who join me now. Juliet and Katie, thank you so much for joining me at uh, British Theatre Guide at what I know is a really busy time in the process, (laughs) I'm sure. Can you tell me whereabouts you are in the process at the moment? Well, we open two weeks today. Oh, goodness, yes, we do. (laughs) (laughs) So final stages, just about we go into tech next week. So our rehearsal this evening uh, is for the prologue, and the prologue takes place outside at the Minster Piazza. Um, It's going to be a massive women's movement march. Uh, There's going to be buskers. It's going to be epic, and um, it's where we start our story in the now and segue into 1913. Ah, great. Okay, so can you tell me a bit more about that, um, the project as a whole, how that sort of history came into your field of vision? Well, it's sort of, there's, there's two strands, this really, because actually, really, ever since Katie and I have been working together um, over the, the years, we've watched all these community productions come and go, <laughs> and we've always thought we love them, and we've been part of yes, them, and we've yes. directed some of them, and all that, yeah. but we've always thought it's quite frustrating that they're such male stories, you know, and as in, we always get at least twice as many females as males joining up to the cast, and yet we tend to be needing to cast all the key roles through our male kind of players, so we just kept saying for a long while, we ought to find something, a story or a production, maybe we just cross-cast it or whatever, you know, and the, that really plays to the, the strength of the female voice. Um, so we'd already been thinking along those lines. And then um, we've been doing a, a wider project this year that Katie and I are both on a kind of a uh, programming group for, which is called Of Woman Born, and it's a season of work that is about female stories, female artist-led projects, and there's been a number of us working on programming those things. And this project idea was brought to the table, and we felt it was a really good fit with what we wanted to do with a community. The person who brought that mm. is now right at the heart of it, because <laughs> that is Barbara Martin, who mm. uh, lives locally to us, obviously a very, very uh, highly acclaimed actress, mm. and mm. she came up with this idea. And at the time, we didn't even know if there was really no. um, a kind of a, even a movement in York. Obviously, we all know a bit about the London story, but she began researching it and, and, and came out with these incredible characters and things that had just never been told before. So it's kind of perfect fit, really. Yeah. And you've got uh, Bridget Foreman as the writer for the project? Yes, we have the fabulous Bridget, mm-hmm. who was also one of the writers on In Fog and Falling Snow. Um, so it's been really lovely to work with her again. And, you know, she's been absolutely incredible, hasn't she? Like, yeah, she's a real re- researcher writer, isn't mm. she, in that way, that she really, really goes into depth yeah. in terms of getting the right groundwork um, for it. Yeah, and I think what's so interesting is she's really um, honed in into uh, the character of Annie Seymour Pearson that Barbara plays. And the play really focuses on her journey and how she became politicised. And I just think it's fascinating when, you know, thinking myself in those circumstances, or even now, you know, you think about um, somebody's journey who possibly looks at something that doesn't and thinks that it doesn't really affect them. Mm. And then when the kind of politics enters the home, it sort of feels like there's nothing you can do about it. And I think that's, um, you know, a really human approach to looking at how we're thinking of things now and telling the story then. Thank you. Um, I should point out that we're talking just a couple of days before uh, we the are. general election. My goodness. And I was thinking that tonight is the night where we need to talk to our young company, check that they're all voting. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some of our cast will be voting for the first time. Exactly. Yeah. It's an exciting time, really. And you're right. You can't separate those two things. And I think that's one of the things that we felt both felt really quite passionate about, that we didn't want it just to be an interesting story that's part of York's history, because, of course, it is, and that's great. Yeah. Um, but we kind of thought, well, we all know the end of the story because women got the vote. Yeah. So 
really, is there any point telling the story unless we are drawing parallels with what's happening today? And so we've spent a lot of time, a lot of going backwards and forwards, especially with Bridget. Bridget has been actually amazing on this as a yes, writer because she's she so yes. responsive. She's used to working in a rehearsal room as well and actually mm. responding to mm. actors. So she's mm. been, been great in terms of uh, finding the way forward. And obviously, as events moved along <laughs> in the last few months, mm. uh, we've been going back and, and changing and revising. Mm. But I think we, we, we kind of all felt that it's about, um, you know, what is, what is it that's happening now that is, is similar to what was happening then? And we, we kind of feel that there is a, there's a real feeling of dissatisfaction Satisfaction with um, with political systems, and yet mm. uh, one response to that is to go, well, what's the point in voting then? Because mm. it's all pointless. You don't get heard. You don't do it. And then you look at what people went through yeah. in order to get the vote, mm. not just for women, but actually for for all men as well, because obviously it was mm. limited initially, mm. and all classes, all walks of life, all backgrounds to actually get that voice. And we should exercise it. We should use it. But at the same time, the need for um, political reform, I think, is one of the things that we've really feel is that is perhaps we're at a similar stage that we're beginning mm. to feel people are so disconnected from how this country is being run yeah. and they are so disconnected from, from us that the need to maybe uh, look at how that is addressed I think is, is something that's coming to the fore. To make some noise. Make mm. more noise. Make more noise, <laughs> yes. That's great because, I mean, I think there's, um, there's a, a danger that people might sort of see these productions which are celebrating local histories and yeah. local stories and in local places people might see them as nostalgic or yes, in some ways exactly. sort of part yeah. of the kind of t- tourist industry of York which yeah. is of course very strong yeah. and yeah. A, you know a, you know really positive thing for the city um, but I, I do get a sense that this project as well as the others uh, are, are doing more than that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, there's still huge amounts of inequality that mm. exists globally. And that's something we really recognise and feel incredibly passionate about. So, you know, the chance to kind of go, oh, great, at the end of this play, we all know what happened. Great, we clap our hands and say, great, you know, it's mm. amazing. And mm. what these women went through was so courageous and something I kind of keep asking myself, would I have been so brave? I don't know. Mm. But actually, it's such an important thing to recognise that this inequality still mm. exists, therefore setting it in the contemporary looking at women's movement uh, women's movement march to kick off the whole start of the show is really important because we're still saying yes we have progressed but yet prog- that progression is not good enough mm. Mm. Thank you and you're working on this project in the context of course we're, of mass involvement of <laughs> community performers, yeah. community kind of backstage crew, support yeah. crew and, and presumably costume, all that all that everything. stuff, everything is... Archive this time as well. Right. Yeah, people really good, digging yeah. into people's stories because we've got um, some cast members who have um, ancestors who were suffragettes um, as well as kind of people yeah. who have been involved in all sorts of things community wise so there's, there's also a whole archive group that's drawing mm. stories together which is the new one um, mm. for us to do mm. but yeah, all the usual areas um, you know, hundreds of volunteers working on which is, which is fantastic. I think that that real appetite that that um, people in New York have to to make work and to make art happen, I think, is is really uh, extraordinary and, yeah. and and encouraging. <laughs> and they're so talented, aren't they? They are. They they're give such up so an much extraordinary time. cast. Yeah. <laughs> How have you found that the process um, differs from previous sort of large-scale community shows? And how, how does that differ in general from the kind of more traditional sort of three-week or two-week and four-week <laughs> rehearsal process that it's you might have for a professional show? It's completely different, isn't it? it but really pace is. yourself. You know, we've been, we've been in rehearsal since the beginning of April. Mm-hmm. And when you're working on something for an intense period of time, it becomes your world mm-hmm. and your life, and that's mm-hmm. something you accept, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But I think with this, it's kind of, you know, you go to work all day, and then you come to rehearsal. Yeah. and you're directing a play so your kind of like full energy has to kind of kick off at half six which is fine mm. it's something we're both used to mm. but sustaining it yeah sustaining it can be, can be difficult tricky, yeah. sustaining your, your, your kind yeah. of on the other hand one of its plus points I think is that things Breathing have more space. time to evolve mm. that's right so actually you know you sleep on something for a couple of yeah. nights and we come back together and we've both had kind of similar feelings about mm. something that's working not working or, or a yeah. way that it could go because because there is that little bit more kind of breath in it so mm. I think there is there's definite you know huge Huge positives to this, and obviously, in terms of directing, it's what a gift to be able to create oh, such amazing, huge yeah. pictures and, and so much detail with so many people, mm. and that's really lovely. You know, most of the time we're lucky to get you know two or three actors in a yeah, room. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, so it's 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 really lovely, um, and it is very hard work, and it's quite hard to sustain, but mm. it has positives. It's is it different to some of the previous community productions? It feels like it's different, but it, it might just be because it's you and me. I don't know. Yeah, or it maybe. may just be because you refine it each time. You know, obviously, we mm. evaluate. 
evaluate all these yeah. projects. You go through the kind of things that work that didn't quite work, mm. and you adjust it. And sometimes that means it's better for some people and less good for others. And it's yeah, always a bit it's of that. Balance, it's quite yeah. difficult to get it exactly right so that everybody feels fully involved and fully on it and absolutely properly kind mm. of used and mm. and with use everyone's time well. And that mm. can be quite hard. Yeah. But, so it does feel different again. Yeah, and mm. I think you know these projects are epic and massive and brilliant, but. Um, they're, and they're great to do with another director because sometimes yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in you know in a production maybe two directors is hard but I yeah. think with these projects you no, it's need really it useful. It's really and you really know useful. particularly sustaining that energy over a long period of time you know that's that's really useful when there's both of you yeah. to kind of pass the baton on yeah. and keep sharing and keep yeah. driving and keep it moving um do, yeah. do you find one of you tends to take on certain kinds of tasks or, or, or parts of tasks and the other one has a different different I kind of... I wouldn't say definitively. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, there's, there's been points when, when one of us has, for example, I did quite a lot of, of the going backwards and forwards to talk to Bridget, but that was only mm-hmm. because that just happened to him because she lives around the yeah. corner from me. Sometimes right. that was quite yeah, useful. Yeah, yeah. And you were doing a lot of talking to um, John, John Beanie. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. we, it's sort of fallen, but not, not exclusively not, no. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think... I think so, I think we both kind of we sort of know what our own strengths are, and you can appreciate that in the other person as well. So you can sort of let them do their bit and do what's good, and also you know know when to back off or know when you when you feel like this is good for me to kind of you know to start driving this bit forward. Um, but meant largely we just tag team. No, we do. We, we, tag like team, we just yeah. let, you know one That's person does one bit and then the other one get. And because actually the sitting back and watching as well as driving something you know, both are valuable space, and, yeah. and it, you know. And we, you know, we uh, we discuss and negotiate as much as is humanly possible yes. in, a, in a rehearsal <laughs> room. <laughs> well, sometimes you just got to let it fly. You know, yeah. you'll be. You might as well. You can talk and talk and talk, but until you're in the room and you're trying something, oh. you don't really know that it's going to work. Mm. So it's just you know allowing that to happen as well, mm. which I think we've yeah been good yeah. at. But I think if you do the right preparation work, you get the ground right yeah. before you go. Then actually. You know, nine that, times out of ten, yeah, the we're seeing the same, same things yeah. or having the same, coming to a similar con- conclusion, mm. um, which is really good as well. Mm. Yeah. And you're coming to a stage now where Barbara Martin is going to be incorporated into rehearsal. She she's is already. already. She's been with she's, us for two weeks. Now. Two yeah. weeks already. That's, yeah. cool. so that's quite a lot of her time that she's kind of giving yeah. to the projects as well. Yeah. Um, how has that been? That transition into working with her in the room as well. Do you notice sort of a change in how the? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Has kind of... You know, you yeah. hear you hear lines in a different way. Cause she's mm-hmm. got her different rhythms. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's so invested in this character. You know, mm. she was so invested in in the story. So, you know, getting her in the room kind of just made it... Ha- you know, you sort of go, oh, OK, this is it. This is the promise of something special. Mm-hmm. Um, we were really fortunate that we had um, the lovely Maggie Smales who mm-hmm. stood in for Barbara... Um, because obviously we couldn't keep her mm-hmm. with us since uh, since April, so it's just been really nice to get her in the space to play mm-hmm. with all the other wonderful characters that she interacts with and to just tell the story. But it's great as well isn't it? because you you um, you end up sort of going back and, and challenging yourself as well on, on certain decisions mm. that you've made because because obviously it was going one way when when Maggie was in there kind of reading it and, and being it and you were sort of guiding it and doing it and getting it to, and then actually Barbara will come in with a totally different yeah. and your different question and you mm. just go oh yeah good okay. Yeah, so sense, yeah. Yeah, let's just do something different with it. So it's good. It's a good stage to actually have that as well. I don't know that I would want to have <laughs> no. a professional actor in right from the the top. It's actually quite it's yeah. actually quite a yeah. sort of useful process. Uh, uh, are you finding that the other cast members are coping all right with that? Because oh, sometimes yeah. it can be difficult if somebody throws at you as a as a performer. You know, no, they I mean, respond. I'm sure a lot of them are very experienced performers, yeah. but not necessarily yeah. professional performers. Yeah. being thrown in line with a slightly different spin might yeah. kind of throw yeah. you off a little. Yeah, yeah they responded it, really well. They have, and it keeps yeah. us all on our toes. <laughs> Yeah, totally. That is good. Yeah. yeah, we've seen yeah. everyone up there. Game. I think people are excited to work with Barbara anyway, mm. and she gives such great energy. Yeah, yeah so yeah, it's good. She's really giving. She's she? very much so. Yeah. So, what are the images and moments that really stand out for you in in this in the story and the in the process and the production as a whole? Um, oh, wow. Of what we've created, or the from story, the generally. story generally. The starting point, I think, was the, and the really strong thing for all of us was was actually, uh, and the main hook actually for Bridget as well, the writer, was this thing about what what was it that politicised um, mm. Annie Seymour Pearson? Why did she? She was, you know, so why did she go into it? And it was that she talks about in one of her diaries about it was what happened to these two little girls in uh, in a lane round sort of mm. in Hewith, and we never know what that is. I think we can mm. probably 
make, um, make you know, draw her own conclusions. But it was that that, that really, really mm. kind of pushed her to just feeling the world isn't fair, the inequality between men and women mm. is not fair, and actually um, those kind of girls' life mean nothing and are worth nothing. And that was what really, really got her uh, got her going. And, 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 she, yeah. and for all of us, we kind of yeah, thought, yeah. yeah, we can, re- you know, you can see. And so we talk about the thing, that it's what's the thing that mm. actually move people into the movement. There's a bit of discussion of that in the in, a, in the play, and um, so that's definitely an, a, a very strong image for us. And and it's interesting that that some things don't really seem to change very much. We might be a hundred years on, but um, yeah, those things are still happening. And you just you know, so I suppose that's strong. That's powerful. Mm. All those amazing women that we saw in the films as well, that, yeah. that you couldn't even see them um, with no, all the just... policemen around these tiny women, you just <sighs> see their hands holding the banners up kind yeah. of the top. That's a strong image. Yeah, and also the women in these riots. Mm. You know, they were in these riots where police were punching them and grabbing them. It was just horrendous. Um, oh, yeah. And, you know, we're grateful. We're grateful that they went through that for mm. us to be able to go and vote on Thursday. It's, mm. uh, you know, an extraordinary thing. That's something I, you know, definitely is in the forefront of my mind of thinking about, you know, being grateful. Mm. And also I'd say the f- in terms of the play, I would probably say the funeral, actually. Yeah, it's very um, powerful. Emily image. Davidson's funeral. Mm. It's a really powerful image. We've got our amazing cast. We've got fit- real footage that kind of bleeds through a gauze into, mm. you know, what our cast are doing behind. Mm. Um, I think the force, be incredibly moving. the force feeding of the women as well when mm. they went on hunger strike is really it was really huge. I mean, there's there's descriptions yeah. of people who have been for, were force fed over two hundred times. You know, and kind of what that must do to their insides, and it's kind of quite graphically described. Mm. Um, you know, that's so that there's some really powerful images, mm. and yet also having just said all the negative, yeah, kind the of solidarity, that, the actually fun, the solidarity, yeah. the fun. Mm-hmm. We went, we didn't want to do something that only had the kind of the, the sense of the of the the grim mm-hmm. kind of right. you know kind mm-hmm. of uh, worthiness. Is that also um, we feel a lot into the silent movie era and the kind of the fun of that so yes. a lot of the the sort of escapades mm. and the adventures because it was kind of it was a real gift for a lot of those women they were doing things they'd never done before in their lives and actually enjoying having some freedom and having so you know mm. and actually <laughs> so we fed all that into a sort of a silent movie style mm. so i think that's quite yeah. memorable as well oh yes and also <laughs> everything <laughs> everything no and the differentiation of class the fact that all these women yeah. came together didn't matter who you were mm. what your name was what you did you you had a single cause mm. and that's quite extraordinary and that's something mm. that definitely does mm. not exist today <laughs> mm-hmm. although at the risk of sounding a little cheesy i mean there's there's some echo of that in the community production there community. is i mean absolutely. because you do yeah. see absolutely yeah. you see all, all you know people from coming together all, and all being ages parts, all kind of yeah. all yeah. parts of your core yeah. classes well, from yeah. around True. york as absolutely well coming right. together. yeah yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, and it also comes back, I think, to what you were saying earlier about faced with these brutalities and inequalities, yeah. you've got the choice of kind of closing up and sh- shutting yourself off yeah. and saying there's no point or going out there and being, you know, performing solidarity, um, making a stand, voting. Yes, you know, mm-hmm. so, so. doing your bit. Yeah. Um, if I could just ask uh, maybe one last question before we wrap it up, because I know you have to get off to rehearsal. <laughs> These productions have clearly been a really strong part of York Theatre Royal's um, programming over the last few years. And pilot. Um, and pilot, sorry, yeah. Do you, is there anything you can tell us, any sort of sense of this continuing into the future for the Theatre Royal and pilot? Are there, are there things that are slated that you can tell us about? Are there kind of rumblings of projects that you can hint at? There's certainly, yeah, from Pilot's point of view, we will absolutely definitely be doing more work in the community. Maybe uh, in slightly more areas of deprivation, so we're working with closely with Tang Hall, with that community, and thinking about doing a project there. Mm -hmm. And yes, very definitely from York Theatre World's side, absolutely. It's on, um, you know, it's there are two specific proposals that um, have gone into our uh, latest um, Arts Council mm-hmm. MPA application. Mm-hmm. But I'm not at liberty to reveal anything more about them. <laughs> but one of them in particular, I think, is a damn fine idea. Oh, yes. Well, that's great. On that, that, on that, good idea. On that tantalising <laughs> note, maybe we can leave it. But best of luck with those applications. <laughs> Thank um, you. So, Everything is Possible opens on Tuesday the 20th of June and runs to Saturday the 1st of July at and just outside the Theatre Royal in York. That's Thanks it. very much, Katie. Thank you. Thank Julia. you. You've been listening to a podcast from British Theatre Guide. For more information, please visit britishtheatreguide.info.